Hi guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy. Welcome to day 12 of 100 days 100 concepts. And today we are going to discuss about some important basics of mechanical metallurgy. Right. So first of all, what is this mechanical metallurgy? And why we are interested to study this? So mechanical metallurgy is basically an area of knowledge where we study or we at least try and deal with the behavior of materials, behavior of different materials. Okay, that means how we, uh, how if we apply any applied force, let's say we apply some applied force, how the material is responding. So, we try to study the response of materials to the external applied forces. So that's why I am interested to call this particular part as physics of metallurgy. Right? So it's important for us to study this because we know that you know we have vast range of applications. Right? So take, take an example of steel only. So if you want to make a window out of it the composition is different the mechanical behavior is different whereas if you want to make a sharp knife a cutting tool the composition should be different and its application is totally different so the response is important right so that's why you know different application demands different type of material and different response of material Right. So, if we don't know how a material is responding to applied forces, we can't say whether the material is able to sustain it or the material will fail. Right. So, that's why there comes a term called plastic deformation. Okay. I'll just explain what is plastic deformation soon. So, why uh, plastic deformation is important because we usually tend to see some amount of plastic deformation usually in metals before failure is taking place before fracture is taking place so that's why we usually tend to see this and to avoid this particular failure or this particular fracture we need to know how the material is responding right so that's the main reason why we are interested to study the physics of metallurgy which is mechanical metallurgy right so we have usually some important mechanical properties which we can correlate with any of the other parameter that we study in mechanical metallurgy right these are usually strength hardness stiffness and ductility okay these are the four important mechanical properties of course i'm not going to elaborate each of this i assume that every one of you know this right so uh, we'll move on and we are interested to test the material for these particular mechanical properties so how we do it we usually go for testing okay so testing is done to find these particular properties and we test in different loading types Okay, in different loading types, we usually try to test a material which is usually uh, in different types of loading types and the first one is called tension, second is called compression and the third type is called shear. So, these are the three different loading types which is usually done on a material to study these important mechanical properties. So, what is done in tension? So basically in tension we usually stretch the material okay we usually try to stretch the material so let's say if i have okay a rod of length l naught i try to pull in a longitudinal way okay so it will form something like this so this is lf so as you can see the length is increased but the area of cross section decreased this will take place in my tension so you can always find 
the reduction in area and the increase in the length okay similarly the second one which i said is compression so compression is just quite opposite to what we did in tension that means if i have a body okay so otherwise i'll yeah so if i have a body okay so we usually apply the force on the body okay as you can see over here right so what happens is if this is a lot this will become something like this this is lf so here lf is less than a lot but af is greater than a not so increase in the cross section area and decrease in the length can be observed okay so i am not going to discuss in detail about what uh, different properties we can gain from this and all we can always go through our website and uh, check the full video course in order to get complete explanation of each and every nook and corner of gate metallurgy syllabus right so now we'll uh, move on to the third type which is shear so shear is usually applying a tangential force on my body something like this okay and what happens because of this my shape of the body will be changing okay so this is theta so this theta is nothing but my shear strain okay so we usually see how is my material resisting my shear forces or tangential forces okay that's given by shear strains okay now what is ductile material and a brittle material so ductile material is something so ductile material is something which undergoes plastic deformation which undergoes plastic deformation during application of a load okay whereas brittle materials brittle material is something which does not undergo plastic deformation so plastic deformation till now i hope uh, i used many times so now let's see what this plastic deformation means okay so usually first of all what is deformation deformation means deforming a body changing the shape of a body so you have three different kinds of deformations okay number 1 is elastic deformation number 2 is plastic deformation number 3 is visco elastic deformation okay so usually elastic deformation is also called I mean the property is called elasticity it's called plasticity and this is called visco elasticity right so elastic deformation means that there is a temporary shape change okay or i can say temporary deformation that means once you remove the load what happens the original shape will be regained okay original shape will be regained okay whereas plastic deformation will give you permanent deformation that means there won't be any coming back of the original shape that means even after removing the okay so here the original shape will be regained after removal of load okay whereas here in plastic deformation even after removing the load no shape regain is possible that means the shape of the body is changed permanently okay whereas visco elasticity so basically this is time dependent deformation okay so it's usually non linear elastic deformation that means if you ask what is the difference between elastic deformation and visco elastic deformation in elastic deformation usually you find that instantaneously the shape is getting back whereas here in visco elasticity it's not the case slowly it will be 
coming to its original position that's why there will be some time needed for us okay so the strain is recovered with time but not instantaneously in terms of viscoelasticity so now quickly we'll see one important graph which we usually say stress strain graph or stress strain curve which we usually plot okay between stress and strain so what is stress stress is nothing but the force that we are applying divided by area okay i'm talking about engineering stress and engineering strain so we take initial area of course we have more than this like we have true stress and true strain we'll see this in the next video okay that's what is strain strain is denoted by epsilon it is equal to the change in length by the original length okay that means you can say the fraction of length that is changed is nothing but my strain okay so usually the units of sigma that is stress is newton per meter square uh, but as a unit will be mpa okay mega pascal whereas strain is unitless because we have numerator and denominator both are length only okay so if you want to plot how the curve will look like for all the three different deformations yeah so let me take this is sigma this is epsilon okay so the first one is something like this okay what is this this is elastic deformation where you see you load the material like this somewhere you are going here and again coming back reloading and the shape is going back to its initial place that means there is no strain even after removal of the complete load okay whereas viscoelastic is something like this it will go something like this and it will come back like this okay so there is it's better to take a different color okay this is viscoelastic material plastic materials usually i mean plastic deformation curve will usually be of more importance for us in mechanical metallurgy because wherever you go you usually see this particular curve so it will look something like this of course there are many modifications okay there will be some yield point phenomena and all the stuff but this is the how this is the common shape of the curve okay so we have some different regions in it i'll just point it this is a dash this is a okay this is somewhere b this is c and this is d finally so a is my elastic limit okay so that means until a there will be elastic deformation that will be taking place that means as i go until this particular point a all this is my elasticity can be observed okay but what is this a dash over here a dash is usually called proportionality limit okay so usually i said that uh, elastic deformation is usually linear that means stress should be proportional to strain but in practical sense it won't happen till the last thing it only follows this particular relation till my a dash okay so as you can see my linearity is deviating after this particular a dash even then this particular curve also i mean this particular part also curves under elastic deformation only okay so this is called my hooks relation or hooks law stress is directly proportional to strain if you just uh, remove the proportionality it says sigma is equal to capital e times epsilon where capital e is the young's modulus of my material okay we'll discuss about it in a bit okay uh, we'll see the other parts b is usually called yield point so we know that once after crossing this particular a there will be starting of plastic deformation but 
we have to standardize it okay you can't easily calculate this particular elastic limit right so we said that okay we'll take some point b where the offset so just draw a parallel line like this and this particular strain in the body when reaching this particular stress should be what it should be 0. 2 percentage of the total strain so let me draw it again let me take this so this particular part should be 0. 0.2 percentage of my strain or you can also write 0. 0.002 times sigma total i mean epsilon total so what is epsilon total somewhere here i have right at the fracture okay this is my fracture or total okay so that is called yield point so what is yield point defined as yield point is nothing but the point or the stress at which there is a minimum permanent deformation that i can observe and it is standard to be 0 0.2 percentage of the total strain and this particular stress is called sigma y yield stress okay i hope you understood the concept of yield point right and of course we have two other things c is called ultimate tensile stress where you can see that the it is the maximum stress a body can sustain after that you can see that the stress is decreasing and the failure is taking place and this is usually due to a phenomena called necking okay so finally d is called my fracture point Okay. So, this is about some important basics of why we have to study mechanical metallurgy and also we saw that this particular curves, stress strain curves are helping us to relate okay, the different uh, deformation types. Okay. Not only that, we can also study different mechanical properties. For example, you have Hooke's law. right? So, sigma is equal to E into epsilon. So, what is E? E is equal to sigma by epsilon. Okay. So, if you just take a small part, let us say D sigma by D epsilon. This is nothing but the slope of this particular elastic limit. So, the slope of the line is giving me my Young's modulus, which is E. And how this is explaining me about the strength, it tells me that if E is more, then the deformation resistance is more. That means E is proportional to deformation resistance. That means if the slope of this particular line, the elastic line is more, then we can say that the material cannot deform easily. That means the stress required to deform permanently is more. Okay, so let's take uh, this line, something like this, which has more slope. So, okay, so for this particular line, if this is sigma y of b, somewhere here will be sigma y of for this particular curve. Okay, so that will be the case. So, E is explaining you about the resistance of a material to elastic deformation, or you can also say deformation resistance. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to explain you about some important basics. We will definitely cover more of it. So, thanks for watching till now. So, if you like our video, please hit the like button and also share with all the made gate metallurgy aspirants. Right. And if you are interested, please go and check our one of the most affordable test series and video courses that are especially designed only for gate metallurgy aspirants. Don't worry if you are doing job, if you are in fourth year, if you are in third year, every kind of aspirant can get benefited okay so it's not that we only focused one kind of people and made this no it helps any kind of people who are attempting gate so if you are interested please go and check it out many people are also benefited already so do go and check it out thank you guys we'll meet you tomorrow with many more interesting concepts thank you